Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebi. Today I'm bringing you a tutorial on how to do the Jelly Roll rug. This pattern is super popular and everybody has been making them, so I figured I would show you how to do it as well. It's fun, fast, and quick, and you can really enjoy all the colors in the Jelly Roll that make them fun. So this pattern, we, can, we have it at Quilt Addicts Anonymous. It's by RJ Designs, and it gives you all the instructions you need to do it. So in this video tutorial, we're gonna give you some tips and tricks it's not going to give you every single piece of instruction because we want you to support the pattern designer so that way they can continue to make more awesome things so get the pattern that's step number one of what you need to get is your pattern you also are going to need some batting so on the inside of all this is a bunch of two and a half inch strips of batting you can either cut your own from extra um, ends from your quilts or Bozel has made these fabulous rolls of two and a half inch strips of batting. There's 25 yards on each roll so if you get two of them that's going to be enough for one jelly roll rug. Of course you need a jelly roll and one disclaimer about this, a jelly roll is actually a trademark name of two and a half inch strips distributed and made by Moda Fabrics. This one is not made by Moda so it's not technically a jelly roll but basically you need one roll of two and a half inch by width of fabric strips. So the one that I'm using for this is by Robert Kaufman. This is called Chop and Charcoal. It's really pretty. I feel like it really is in the vein of the Joanna Gaines um, popularity right now with all those neutrals. I feel like this is going to make a real modern, real contemporary rug that will look great in my house. Um, we do have more of these while they last at the shop. If not, we always have lots of selections of two and a half inch strips, so you can kind of take a look and see which one you like best. Uh, you need a spool of RFO thread. You need the entire stinking spool. It's recommended 1,200 yards of this, which you would get on one of these. I'm using color 4670 because it's a nice variegated one, so it's gonna look good across all of these gray tones. Roma actually recommends that you use a variegated and that makes a ton of sense because with a variegated thread you don't have to match it exactly because that color is going to change a little bit as you go and there's just no way you're going to pick one thread that's going to match perfectly with everything. You also need some batting tape. Um, you may have used this if you've ever pieced your batting together but you need it in order to join your two ends here and especially if you are making your own you're going to need a lot of it because you're going to have lots of ends to join. Um, other things you need, you need a jeans needle. This gets pretty thick, so you want to make sure you install one of those on your sewing machine. And they also recommend you use some Mary Ellen's Best Press as you work on this. So let's get started. So if you're someone who absolutely hates winding bobbins in the middle of a project, she recommends that you pre-wind four to five, and that should last you for the entire project. So if that's something you do and you've got a bunch of extra bobbins, definitely do it. It'll make it a lot faster because you can just go once you get started. All right, so step one is basically to create a gigantic binding strip. And you do that by deciding what order you want these to go in. I'm just gonna keep them in the order that they have already been arranged because there was already a professional who did that and decided that this looked really good together. And I agree, um, it starts with a nice light strip and then kind of gradually transitions into the darker ones. I think that's gonna look really good in the final rug. Um, occasionally you may wanna mix things up a little bit and give it your own spin, but in this case, I really like the way this looks. So I'm just gonna pull one strip off another and sew these together like I would any binding for a quilt. Just it's super long because it's like 42 strips. Um, 40 to 42 strips depending on how big your jelly roll is as opposed to like 11 is the biggest I've ever done before for a king size quilt. So I've got a lot of that to do. So if you're not a quilter, I'm gonna give you some real quick instructions on how to join these together if you've never done binding before. So what I'd like to do is lay all of my strips right next to my sewing machine going horizontally on the table so that way they're kind of running right into where my sewing machine is at. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one strip and unfold it so that this is going horizontally. And then I'm going to take another strip. This was the first one on that roll. And I'm going to put it together perpendicularly with that. Now the idea here is we're gonna sew from the top left to the bottom right. So that way when we fold this open, you end up with a piece that's like a nice continuous strip. 
if you unfold it and it looks like it's going at a right angle, you've done something wrong and you need to reposition. So for beginners, I always recommend that you pin this in place. And just so you know, the reason why I have it overlapping like this, there's two reasons why. One, we don't wanna use this selvage. The selvage has a different weave and it just doesn't look as pretty. So we don't wanna include that in our strips. And we also, gives us a really good visual because I can sew from where these two seams meet at a right angle to where these two seams meet at a right angle and everything's gonna come out nice and, and straight when I'm done. Now, if you're a beginner, go ahead and pin that and then also just use the edge of your pattern to kind of line up from where those corners are from the top left to the bottom right. And they make, uh, you can use a pencil for this. I'm using a marker so it will show up nicely for you on camera. But I also recommend that you draw your line. That way you have a really clear idea of where to sew when you're getting started. Once you get the hang of what you're doing, you can skip drawing the line, you can even skip pinning, but at least this way you have a nice visual on what to do. So with my needle in the center position, I'm gonna go ahead and sew from one to the next. Make sure you remove your pins as you come to them. You don't want to sew those. If you have a machine that has an automatic thread cutter, use it. It's so gonna be worth it. All right, so now I wanna open this up and I wanna make sure that it's nice and straight, and it is, which means I'm good to trim these down to a quarter inch. Now it doesn't have to be exactly a quarter inch. It's not like you have to get out your rulers and measure them. You can eyeball it. But what you don't want to do is have a seam that's too skinny. So I usually kind of err on the side of going a little bit bigger. Now here's why I have everything laid out nicely is because then I can just grab my next strip, unfold it, lay it right sides together with the one I just did, and now I can sew from my top left to my bottom right and just do that all the way down until all my strips are together. So I'm now covered in Jelly Roll Fuzz and I have a gigantic strip of two and a half inch strips that have all been sewn together from my strip roll. So now I have to press all them open and then we're ready to start preparing the uh, strips with the batting so we can get our rug together. So to keep this as flat as possible, you're going to want to press these seams open that you cut off and help manage all this bulk. Make sure as you are pressing that you're folding these pieces into about 12 to 16 yard fan folds. This will help manage the super, super long piece of fabric. All right, I finished pressing all of my seams open and fan folding them. And I've done the step where I need to trim a tapered end here. The instructions for this part are in the pattern and because we want you to support the pattern designer who created this lovely pattern, I'm not gonna give them to you here. So you have to get the pattern to figure out the precise measurements for doing this, but I will give you a little tip. What I did is you're gonna put these together as one to do it, your roll and then also your fabric. And what I did was I put a little pin in a little bit, about an inch or so away from where that tapered end is. That kind of helped everything kind of hold together as I was trimming and it made it a little bit easier to work with this. All right, so now that that's trimmed, what I need to do is move this down about a half an inch from the edge here. So that way this is gonna start and the edges are kinda kinda be enclosed a little bit. So I've got that folded over. And now treating these as one, you wanna fold these to the center, which is kind of challenging with these little bits. It's it a little easier as you go a little further down. So I'm going to start there. I'm going to 
gonna put my pin in here that will help hold it together so that way I'm not fighting it. This one, I'm gonna put a little pin in at the tip, right along that fold line, to keep this folded over. If you have binding clips, now would probably be a good time to use those to help you keep everything in line. Or you can use pins like I'm doing here too. All right, so I've got that edge nice and secure down here. I'm gonna go ahead and sew. It's wanting to sew in place a little bit because there's nothing really to grab a hold of on those feed dogs because the strip is not wide enough yet. So I'm just kind of gradually moving it forward a little bit. Almost have enough here for two grab. There we go. All right, now I've gotten to the point where the part I'd folded in is now coming apart again. So I've got to re-tuck those ends in so we have no raw edges. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a hold of these threads from when this started to kind of help pull that through. Still lifting up a little bit as I go till those this is bad enough for the feed dogs to grab a hold of and move on their own. Now you kind of want to be tapered in. Eventually you want to be sewing right down the middle of this, but it takes a little bit to get there. Um, once you're done with that tapering, then you're able to do that. All right, now I'm not gonna pin and clip this whole bit because this is, this is yards and yards and yards of fabric, so I'm not gonna do that. What I'm going to do is I'm just gonna kind of unroll a little bit as I need it, and I'm just going to fold it in um, like you would if you were doing double fold bias as I go. And I'm just kind of worrying about whatever will fit on the top of my sewing machine. So I can get about four inches or so here. I've got that rolled in. And so I can just go ahead and sew down that and kind of hold it in place with my fingertips. And then when that part is done, I'm just gonna line everything up again refold it into the center and keep going. And so obviously I have a, a long way to go because I have a lot of fabric here. So I'm not going to have you guys sit and watch that, and, but go ahead and do that with yours too. And then we'll come back in a little bit as I've got enough to kind of start making a coil. All right, so I've got two of my strips sewn together. So I'm gonna start making the coil. And this is recommended so that way you can kind of keep track of everything um, and you don't end up with this massive thing that you can't control later. So the goal is you cannot twist this. You want it to be nice and, and sturdy all the way around. And it's gonna end up being about the size of a small basketball. So I did a couple of loops around my finger and this is already really wanting to twist, so you have to kind of untwist it as you're going. And I kind of just wanted to wait until I had at least something substantial to roll around before I got too far on this. All right, so I've got about two there. I'm gonna secure this in place right now with a hair tie. And that should keep it together um, until I get a couple more and then I'll wind it around some more. So whether you're using two rolls or whether you're using little pieces of batting scraps, you're going to need to fuse your bits together. So to do that, we've got some batting fusing tape. I'm going to show you how to put this together. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of butt my edges up next to each other. And then I'm going to lay a piece of batting tape on top and I'm going to cut that to size. I'm just going to eyeball this. We just need to keep it together long enough to get it enclosed. 
Now we need to lay a press cloth over that. That can be any scrap of fabric that you have. And I'm just gonna lay my iron over it for a few seconds. Try and get that heat to transfer through. All right, I'm gonna press that up. See how this did? And it's fused pretty well together. So you're gonna have to do this a lot if you use scraps or if you do the bagging rolls, you can use it that way. And then you just have to do it one time and you can use this for when you're piecing batting together to make a big quilt. All right, back to creating more quiltable. So when I get to the very end, I'm gonna cut off the salvage. And I'm also going to cut my batting strip so that it's a little bit shorter than my piece of fabric. Just going perpendicularly across it. Then when I get toward that last bit, I'm gonna fold that end piece in so that way all my edges are covered. right off. I'm going to go ahead and reinforce some stitches here. Sewing backwards a few and then forward. And my coil's done. Have a realistic expectation of how long this project might take. I started the entire thing yesterday afternoon around 2 and I sewed everything together and got my entire ball together by 9 30 with taking about a two hour break uh, for dinner and I had a meeting to go to. So I did all that yesterday and today I'm going to start actually assembling the rug. I've got about two hours uh, first thing in the morning before the rest of the family gets up. So I'm taking advantage of a quiet house and filming the rest of this video. So step one is if you do not have a sewing machine that sits level with your tabletop, you need to grab every single craft book that you own. Well, it could be any book. I grabbed all of my craft and sewing books and you need to get it level with the top of your table. That's so your rug doesn't kind of do one of these as you're going. Cause it's going to get heavy. It's going to get hard to, um, keep straight if you don't do that and then you might end up with something that looks more like a bowl and not a nice flat rug. So the other thing you want to do is you're going to measure out from the blunt end to a specific point that I'm not going to tell you on camera because you need to buy the pattern and support the pattern designer who created this fabulous addicting pattern and put a pin there where it tells you to in the number. Um, they also have some adjustments if you want a more oval rug or if you want a more round rug of where you can adjust that pin to and doing it exactly as the original pattern is written. The other thing is you want to contain this, otherwise it's going to roll all over the place. So you want to put it in a bin between your feet. So I've just got this old Ikea bin. I'm going to put it between my feet and put the ball underneath there. Now you want to fold this over at where you place your pin and you want to have your double sided area pointing to the left. That way when we wrap around and come around the other side you're going to end up with the single edge always on the outside and that will make and for a nice finish when you are done and ready to go with this rug. Now I've set my sewing machine up to sew a zigzag stitch. We want to be able to catch all of those pieces as you go through. I'm going to go ahead and remove this pin. I do not want to sew over it. I just want to kind of have it to be as my guide here. Now obviously you're going to have some overlap when you first get started here. And you want to reverse your stitches to really get that good and snug. You do not want the center of your rug coming out on you. 
And anytime you run out of bobbin, you're gonna to wanna to double tap these stitches as well. All right, so the feed dogs are taking it kind of slowly to start with. And I'm kind of spreading it out so that those two will be even and side by side as we get there. And I've done like the baskets and bowls before. So this is kind of similar to that. I'm gonna widen up my stitch width a little bit just so I can make sure I'm catching both of those sides. Just do whatever works for you. You know, if you need to make an adjustment to make sure that it's working for your sewing habits, do it. What's important is that you are getting both sides of that as you are sewing. I kind of want to hold on to this as it's going through to make sure that this first round is really straight because you do not want a rug that is shifting on you as this is going to be your foundation for everything going forward. I'm also using my machiner's quilting gloves. I like to use them whenever I'm doing something with like some substantial weight to it, which this is going to get heavy quickly. It just helps me grip everything and makes it a lot easier for me to do a good job. Okay, so I've reached the end of that first section and now it's time to make the turn. So I'm gonna kind of lift my presser foot up and push this against the blunt edge. And in the pattern it says it's totally okay to have a few puckers on these first couple of rounds because it is a really tight corner. At the very end of everything, we're gonna spray starch everything with Mary Ellen's Breast Press and it's gonna forgive a lot of our sins as we go through this. Again, just to make sure the important thing here is that you are gonna be catching both ends. Okay, so now I've gotten to the edge of the perpendicular part of that. So now I'm gonna flip it again. And now I'm heading back toward me with that big long piece. And just continuing to make sure that it goes nice and slow. Make sure I'm catching everything. And then when I get kind of on a straightaway, I can go faster again. So as I saw, I'm really just kind of pushing these layers together, like toward each other and letting the feed dogs take it through. That's what you're walking, but it's for to help move everything along nice and smoothly. Always double check that you are catching both sides. Of your fabric folds. All right, so we're time to turn another corner. Um, this is going to be a really sharp corner again. We might get a couple puckers. It's okay, um, but I'm just going to take my time here. It's going to get easier as these curves get bigger to round the corner. But when you're first starting out, it's going to be super challenging, um, and you just need to take your time. You know, it's not anything that you can't do. Just like, okay, so I got to the end of where my inner coil is on the left, so I'm just stopping with that needle down. If you have a, a function on your sewing machine where you can make it stop the needle down, engage that. It's gonna make it a lot easier when you're turning these corners. Flop that down there. Do a couple more stitches. Okay. Try and smush that down as much as possible as we turn that tight corner. another straight away so you're just gonna keep going round and round and round like that we'll check back in in a little bit when this starts getting a little bit bigger than our throat plate and show you some ways to manage that so 
because these strips are not cut on the bias, as you go around, you might have a little bit of curling. Remember, this is curling up a little bit at the lip. And so I'm gonna show you how to use some breast press and an iron to flatten that back out. All right, I'm gonna liberally spray this entire corner with breast press. And then on my hottest siding of my iron, I'm gonna press that. get it nice and flat. You can see the best press kind of turning the steam maybe on the camera. Now the rug is laying nice and flat again, and so I can keep going around. I'm probably gonna do this every couple of rows whenever I start to see that curling happen to kind of do a little reset, make sure it stays nice and flat as we're working so we have a nice rug at the end and not a giant odd shaped bowl. I've reached the end. I've got a little bit of my tail here. This is a tapered end that we made to start off with when we started our strip. You want to make sure that you get that as close to the edge as possible so you don't have it sticking out. reinforce my stitches and I'm going to go back and forth quite a bit here just because I really don't want that to come apart this is I mean it's going to be a rug it's going to be used and abused and so I want to make sure that that's good and tight all right so I've got my whole rug together but we still have a little bit more to do I need to press this within an inch of its life to get it good and flat and to do that first I have to clear off my entire desk so I can have a nice flat surface to work with so I'll be right back all right so my rug is together but it is far from flat there are lots of waves in this thing and we need to get it nice and flat and that's just because, you know, when you ever you do something that's supposed to be on a curve and it's not on the bias, it's gonna wanna do this because it wants to be straight. It doesn't wanna be a curve. But the good thing is, is this is fiber. And so we can manipulate it to make it do what we want. So I'm gonna spray this down big time and pretty much completely soak this. Um, not completely soak. I don't want it to be like it just came out of the wash or anything. But I'm going to get a good and damp um, with some Mary Ellen's Bass Press and then I'm going to set to work pressing it in place. If you're able to work on a surface that is as large as your rug, do it. That'll make your life easier. All right, so I'm going to press out here. flatten out the side here. If it's not flattening, then we need some more water. And best press. All right, I'm gonna hit some more here. It's still popping up on me. So 
this rug was pretty weighty. So what I ended up doing, since my table is smaller than the actual rug surface, is I took it over to the floor and I laid it out flat and I started by getting my center nice and flat and then working out. And anywhere where it was coming up, I just like sprayed the heck out of it. And then I did this across it until I could get it flat. And then when this end was flat, I kneeled on it to keep it straight and flat. And I came over and I did my other side. And if you don't, if you can't kneel, if you're working on a table, you could always place some heavy books on top. Maybe all the ones that you just took off your desk to keep it nice and flat. But with enough time, and either water or Mary Ellen's Best Press, you can get this to lay nice and flat. Now the iron has dried a good amount of that spray starch and water, but it's not totally dry. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay it nice and flat and let it dry the rest of the way and that will set it in place. Basically what you're trying to do here is you can see that this, these inner corners have scrunched up quite a bit. So what you're trying to do is instead of having it curve up, you want to get them to sort of scrunch together in these tightest areas, and that's what will keep it nice and flat. So if you work on it kind of as you're going and you do a really good job with it, that will help. Um, but otherwise, just press it to death when it's done and your rug will look fabulous. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on how to do the jelly roll rug. You can do it with any two and a half inch strip roll and either your leftover batting or you can pick up those batting rolls from Bozel. Um, we have everything you need to complete this project over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. You can uh, click on the link in the video below and you can get everything you need for this project and you can pick it out and make your own. It's super fun. Um, it probably took me less than eight hours so if you wanted to do it all in a day you could if you had like a crafty weekend or the girls are getting together for a retreat or something this would be a really fun project to do and it's super fun and it looks it's basically the gigantic version of a jelly roll they look so cool when they're all wrapped up and you don't know what you want to do with them because they're so pretty but you can basically create the same look and decorate your sewing room or your house or wherever with these super fun rugs um, make sure you support the pattern designer and get the pattern. We didn't give you all the details in this video specifically because we want you to support the pattern designer. Um, we have these available and I actually asked special permission to do this video from the pattern designer before I did it to make sure that it was going to be okay and that she was good with us giving some hints and some tips and tricks without revealing everything. So go support her, buy the pattern, it's really fun and they're addicting. I'm already thinking of what I'm gonna make with my second one. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, we have lots of others too on different quilting tips and tricks and as well as some other DIY stuff. So make sure you check it out um, either at, on YouTube by searching for Quilt Addicts Anonymous or going to our website, quiltaddictsanonymous.com and clicking on the tutorials page. You can find lots of fun stuff to do there. And if you like this, make sure you hit subscribe and the notifications button so you know when we release new videos. We're doing it pretty often this year, so there's lots of fun stuff coming your way. Thanks so much and happy quilting.